A year ago today, I was at Fred Bean's Ford in Boyertown, Pennsylvania, standing just like this right next to my brand new 2018 Mustang GT. Now at the time, we were one of the first shops to get our hands on this car. This was my personal car and I did a review of what I thought of my first impressions. Well, since then, obviously we've done a lot of work to this car and being that it's been a year since we owned it, I'm gonna give you a review today of my first year of ownership of my 2018 Mustang GT. Now, obviously when I bought this car, the plan was to modify. I mean, it's what I do for a living. I work here at CJ's and I wanted to make sure I did a lot of work to this car. Now, I did want to give it, this car was trying for more of, maybe I call it a classier look. Uh, I didn't want to go over the top with graphics, nothing crazy. I mean, I went with a bright red paint, which I never had a red Mustang before. And I love the race red. I'm glad I went with it. But as far as the exterior modifications, I kept it more on the subtle side, but there's actually a lot of things done to this car. I mean, the first and most obvious change cosmetically and performance wise too, is our HRE FF04 wheels. Now I actually had these for my blue 2015 Mustang. When I sold it, I held on to them because I definitely wanted to put them on this car. And I've had probably 15 other wheels on this car in the last year. I think these are still my favorite. I love the way they look on the car. We also added the Rally Innovations ground effects. We have the front splitter, side splitter, and the rear splitters. Then I went with the Cervini's upper and lower grille just to give it a much cleaner overall look in the front. Now when I ordered this car, I actually ordered it with a wing delete because I wasn't a fan of the performance pack spoiler. When the car showed up, the spoiler was already on it, so we took advantage of that, used the existing holes, and added the GT350 track pack spoiler from Ford Performance. Now, obviously, one of the most dramatic cosmetic upgrades we made to this car is my custom roof wrap. Now, a lot of people asked about this. We did it for Mustang Week this year to make the car kind of stand out from all the other Mustangs we thought would be down there, and it really came out great. I love the American flag theme. We designed this in-house, and it really, really looks great on the car. Now, we've had a lot of people ask if we're going to offer this for sale, and we actually are not planning on doing so. The main reason is this was difficult to install. I mean, it took me and another guy about three or four hours to get this installed and make it look proper. It's very difficult and definitely not something for a first timer to attempt. If you do like the flag though, reach out to me on social. I'll be happy to send you the file. Now, when we got this car, everybody was wondering about the new Gen 3 Coyote with the direct injection. You know, how much power would this car actually make? So we took this down to our friends at Revolution Auto down in Baltimore, did some stock dyno runs, and it made between 420 and 425, which is about right for the 18, and definitely better than the 15 through 17. We added a JLT and a custom tune and saw 450, and then pretty much broke the internet when we added some E85 and made 473 horsepower with just a fuel tune and a JLT intake. Was that enough? No, nope, we weren't even close to done. With the popularity of the Roush Supercharger on the 2015 through 2017, it only made sense to add one to our 2018 as well. We cover this in a detailed installation video, which has gotten a ton of views on our YouTube channel, and this setup made over 650 horsepower to the tires. And under the hood, in addition to the Roush Supercharger kit, we visited our friends out at Mishimoto, and they installed a bunch of different parts on the car at the time. We're still running their coolant tank on the car. We also worked with our friends down at UPR to develop this oil catch can system to work with the Roush Supercharger on the 2018. So while the 2018 Mustang wasn't a completely new chassis, there's enough changes that a lot of manufacturers weren't sure what would work. So our friends at Barton actually came down to visit us and brought their hybrid three shifter. We weren't even sure it was gonna work on this car, but we did a full installation video, and it works great. Another part was the suspension. Obviously, I wanted to lower my Mustang, but I wanted the Magna Ride. Well, there were no springs available for the Magna Ride GT. We figured, hey, the Shelby uses Magna Ride, let's give them a shot, and they work great on the GT. And performance-wise, obviously, the last modification is exhaust. Now, this car, I think it's had at least 15 different systems on it. I've heard everything out there. Right now I'm rocking the Borla S-Types and absolutely love them. I was a fan of the MBRPs as well that were on there. And again, there's so many different options. Definitely check out our page and find the sound that you like. So the last year since I picked this car up, I put 10,552 miles on it. I took it down the Anamaray Atlanta race the day after we installed the supercharger. It's kind of like a nice test run for the car. Uh, it's been the Mustang week. We took it to the Dream Cruise at Woodward to the Moxham show out there. And I love driving the car. I mean, it's amazing for me that I've had this for a year. I've never had it down a drag strip. I just, uh, it's something I just don't really have any real desire to do with this car. Um, I know obviously the automatics are faster. I know it'll run 11 somewhere in there, probably with the, uh, the supercharger and the stick shift. But I just, it's something I don't really have a desire to do with it. I just enjoy driving it. I mean, when I got it, I ordered the Magna Ride suspension. That was something I really wanted. And I've driven our SEMA car and that's got the Ford lowering springs on it. And it drives nice, performs well, handles well. 
but there's just a solidness to the Magna Rod cars that, to me, is worth every penny. And absolutely, I enjoyed it the day that I got it, and I still enjoy driving to this day with the Magna Rod suspension on it. Now, I had mentioned when I got the car, you know, we had, obviously, the MT-82 is new for 2018, and, you know, at the time, the gears felt different to me. I didn't know yet that they actually did change the fourth was one-to-one. -one. The gear ratios weren't quite as optimal for NA. They do work really well for a blower setup. You know, as far as the transmission goes, there's obviously been a lot of issues with the three, four forks breaking. Um, I've been lucky so far. I mean, knock on wood, don't have any, but mine's been pretty solid. Um, you know, again, I don't drag race the car. I don't abuse the hell out of it, but I drive the car hard, have some fun with it. And mine's held up so far. I mean, the only transmission issue I have seen is I do get an occasional second gear lockout. Usually it's when it's colder, um, definitely higher RPMs, but sometimes it does not want to go in a second, which with the new transmission isn't supposed to be an issue with the new clutch and the flywheel and everything that's in it. Um, but even with the Barton shifter, I have had that problem a couple times with the car. Um, beyond that, the only other issue I've had with it is my cluster. I love the 401A cluster. You know, we did a video on the LCD, told you how it works, all the cool stuff that it does. Uh, I did have to have mine replaced though. Uh, the cluster went bad about three months ago. I was getting weird things on the screen, like uh, sensors weren't reading properly and stupid stuff like that. And uh, took it to the dealer, had them look at it. They tried to reflash, and as soon as they reflashed it, it just simply died. So I did have to have the cluster replaced. Obviously, it was covered under warranty on it. Uh, besides that, there's nothing I don't really like about the car. I really wish Ford would bring the glass roof back, uh, but beyond that, I'm glad I got the Recaros, I'm glad I got the Magna Ride suspension. Wasn't really sure I'd be a fan of the race red, but now that I got it, I actually do really like the color of the car. Um, I kind of wish, I, I shouldn't say I kind of wish, sometimes I do wish I got the automatic. And for me, that's saying a lot. I am a stick shift guy, hardcore. That auto is amazing though. I mean, it's, it's so easy to go fast with those cars. I mean, with this blower, with the auto in it, even with a stock tune, it's an easy high 10 second car. And with a custom tune and a little work to it, bottom 10s is, is pretty simple. Uh, so it is, the automatic is legit, but I shouldn't probably say that I wish I got it because I do love the manual. I mean, when I'm out driving the car, we're gonna hit some twisty roads and have some fun with it. The manual to me is still a little more fun, but occasionally it would be cool to have that automatic with the blower and be able to go that fast, that easily. I mean, it is, it is definitely a temptation for sure. But besides the occasional second gear lockout, like I said, I, I've been pretty good with my transmission, you know, just over 10,000 miles now, and it's held up pretty solid for me. And it says, as far as the exhaust goes, I've had a lot of different systems on the car. I had Borla S-types on my 15. That ended up being the one that I stuck with, and it looks like that might happen again with the 18. Yeah, you know, right now I have the S-type on there, and uh, I have the chrome tip version, which I like, and you know, Borla, if you're watching this, I'd love a set of black tips, but uh, it sounds good. I mean, it really sounds good on this car. I had an opportunity to be behind my car the other day driving my truck, and I was listening to my wife driving, and, and I didn't think it would, it's definitely louder outside the car than I thought it would be, uh, but it sounds amazing driving. Like, inside the cabin, the Borla just sounds really, really good. But, you know, I got the performance pack, so I have the factory Brembos, and the brakes are absolutely amazing. Um, you know, they're the same setup as a 15 through 17, dust-wise, stuff like that. Upgraded pads will definitely help out with that. I swear my coat on my wheels, which does help a little bit keeping the brake dust down. But like I said, driving impressions, you know, the, the, I, I don't regret the Magna Ride for sure. I absolutely love it. The handling is amazing. It's solid, holds the road, and it rides nice. I mean, I bought this car to drive it. I've done a bunch of road trips with it. And every one of those road trips, like, it's comfortable. Like, the suspension is firm, compliant, but it doesn't beat you up either. It really, really works well. And, you know, that would, I have a, you know, I'm going to credit that the Magna Ride, but the Ford Springs help too. I mean, Ford wasn't even sure they would work when we put them on. And, you know, that's kind of the fun with doing some of these videos. We're doing parts we didn't know if they would work or not. Uh, one good example is the steering wheel. Uh, one of the first installation videos we did on the 2018 was I wanted one of the 350R steering wheels. The red stripe will look killer with the red car, and I always liked the Alcantara. So we did the installation video, installed the whole wheel on the car, got to the very end to pop the airbag on, and as we all know now, Ford changed the airbag for 18, and it didn't work. Uh, but we do have a solution for that, so keep your eyes on our channel here. We'll, uh, we'll give you an update soon on that as well. 
but you know, overall, people have asked, hey, do I, reg- do I regret getting rid of my 15 to get the 18? And absolutely not. Uh, the 15, I think, is every bit as quick. Um, it made a little bit less power on the dyno, but I also found that the, the 15 through 17 doesn't seem to heat so quite as bad as the 18 has so far. So uh, I think power-wise, they're pretty close. And with the gear ratios, the 15 might be a hair quicker, um, but they're going to be pretty close overall. But I did just get an email from Roush, and they do have an updated tune now that just came out today for the 2018 with the supercharger. So we're going to try to get that on the car soon and then maybe get back to the dyno and see what kind of power that makes. All right, so now that I'm a year in, what's next for my 2018? And honestly, I don't have an answer. There's some small things I want to do, like our new Acelltech taillight panel. I love that it doesn't smear as bad. I'm going to put one of those on here in the future. But beyond that, I'll see what's out there. We just got back from SEMA. We saw some cool things out there that I definitely would think I could see putting on my car somewhere in the future. Now, as far as regrets, I don't think I really have any. I, I don't regret getting rid of my 15. I love that car, but I definitely like the 18 better. And again, there's been some issues with the 18. There's been ticks and fork issues, but luckily, my car hasn't had any issues so far. But we have this car, we have our other orange 18, and our SEMA car as well. So if you like things 18, 19 Mustang, make sure you keep it here at cjponyparts.com.